Hi, John here from GPS Training. I hope you're all keeping well. Welcome to the latest walk and talk with GPS Training. So today I'm going to go on a 17 mile walk from Rothby. So we're still in lockdown, so it's Rothby behind us. So I thought this is the last walk more than likely that I'll do um, from our base here, here based in Northumberland. And then we'll go a little bit further afield. So I'm going to do a 17 mile walk here from Rothby. I'm going to go up. St. Oswald's Way, which is a long distance trail, over the shoulder of Simonside. We saw the last video I went over the top of Simonside last time, over to Harwood Forest. I'll jump off St. Oswald's Way there and come through to Whitefield Hill. So Whitefield Hill is it's over there in the distance. You're not going to be able to see it. It's a little bit in the distance. And then we're going to drop back down to the valley and then come back along via the River Coquit. And we've got time, we're going to go and see uh, what we call Caston Lakes on my way back. So it's quite a varied walk. Um, not got the altitude, I think we're up to about 1200 feet, so we've not got the altitude that we had last time. But the sun is shining. And what GPS have I got with me today? As you can see from my pouch there, hopefully you can see it. Any guesses? It is the Garmin Montana 700. So turn the right way around, John. There you are. Garmin Montana 700 is what we're going to navigate today. So this is a large screen GPS unit from Garmin. Okay, it's the Garmin 700, which is the large screen GPS unit from Garmin. A five inch diagonal screen, so it's got a cracking large screen GPS unit. Really nice new GPS unit. There's also a 700i, which has the in-reach technology, the two-way satellite communication, and also a 750i, which has a built-in camera, and also the two-way satellite communication. It's just under 400 grams, I think it's 387 or 390 odd grams in weight. So it's a little bit heavier than what we find on a average size GPS unit. Built-in battery, which is giving us 18 hours of battery life. So again, plenty of battery life on the back of that. After last walk I did, people say it'd be really good if you could show us how you plan the route on your computer before you go. So here's me yesterday planning the route in the office before I left for the day. I've just created a new list, so it's called Montana Walk on the left hand side. And you literally just go up to the new route planning tool here. So every time there's a major corner in the path, I just click, 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 click. And I just start creating that route ahead of me to ready to follow. When I've created my walk, I can just rename it on the right hand side. Just right click, rename, you can rename it whatever you want. And once you've renamed it, you can have a quick look at it. Double click on it, brings up the route dialog box and you've got various things. You need to check you've got under 250 waypoints. We've got 63 waypoints. It's telling us it's 16 and a half or 17 miles. Let's you click on the graph. The graph's a really nice overview of what you do. So you can see as I walk around, I'm gonna have a gradual climb up. This is my high point and then I'm gonna drop down so plan that correctly, do a little bit of a climb before I drop back in to Rothbury. Then all I need to do is just right click, send to, just find my internal storage on my GPS device, and press OK, and that's now sent to my GPS. Quickly just click on your internal storage, make sure your route's there, there it is, and we're all ready to go. So we're back here at the start of the day's walking. We need to make sure that everything's ready, ready to get us going. So first thing we need to do is calibrate our compass. We've calibrated our compass already, just to make sure we get improved accuracy with the electronic compass that's built in. Next thing we need to do is just check we've got a satellite signal. So just tap on the satellite. We can check we've got a satellite signal. We've we'll actually got an accuracy of 10 feet. There's our grid reference, NU being the sheet number. BNG stands stands telling me that it's set up to British National Grid. And we've got our 10 figure grid reference at the bottom. You see we're picking up both the American GPS and also the Galileo, the European satellite. So it'll be interesting to see how much accuracy improves during the day, but 10 foot accuracy is fairly good. So you have just switched that GPS unit on. Next thing I'm gonna do is just reset the trip and track date. So on this unit, we just press the power button lightly on the side, and we have this activity pause at the top. I just press the activity pause at the top, and you can see everything zero, zero, zero. I literally just press that play button, and everything's set. You'll see I'm starting to count up, and that's my track being recorded, which is the breadcrumb trail our GPS leaves behind us. And also the trip computer that will tell us how far we've walked, average speed, how long we stopped for, how long we've been walking for as we go through that walk. Next thing we need to do is load the route that I planned on the computer. So I press the magnifying glass down the bottom, which is where to. I select routes, that top right hand corner, and there's the route I planned on the computer. Montana 700, 
walk and talk. It just brings it up, just takes a few minutes, and there it is, the 17 mile walk, and there it is, overlaid on the Ordnance Survey map. And I'll let you just press go. And now I'll get that compass rose at the top, showing me the direction I need to be walking in. Really nice in this unit, got this shortcut bar down the bottom. I literally can press the compass bar on the top, and you can see I've got the um, the compass rose on that map page. So again, if I walk, hopefully it'll all start working. So you can see it's going to start working out what time I'm going to get to my next waypoint and what time I get to the destination. At the moment, it's saying 5.26, 5.14. So as I settle into my routine, it will start working out what time I get to the end of the walk, 4.30. I estimate it's going to be around then, 4.15. I reckon it's going to be about 4.30 by the time I've stopped and done my, had my lunch and had my rest and done some videoing. So estimated time of destination, time to next waypoint, distance to next waypoint, and the speed I'm walking. I don't think I'm able to walk at 3.3 miles an hour. I think one of the biggest things about a Garmin GPS unit is the screen in the sunshine. So very rare we get sun in this country, but look at that. The sun's out, it's a lovely sunny day. And the worst place to look at a GPS unit is actually indoors, isn't it? You know, you need a backlight on. They're not made to work indoors. No, mobile phones are made to work indoors. Tablets are made to work indoors, but outdoor GPS units, look at that. Sun on it, full sunshine. It's a March day, sun shining. Look at the clarity of that screen. You no, know, it's seconds and on. So it's a different screen technology than what we find on a a, um, a mobile phone or or some other GPS units that are on the market. Do you know when the Montana 700 came out, it was hugely popular. It's still his hugely popular GPS unit. But the thing I really struggled to get my head around was how to carry such a big GPS unit. Do you know, as people have been on courses with me. Do you know, often after know that after a day's course, often I put my walking boots on and go for a walk. So, and I was doing a walk in the Lake District last year and uh, finished at half four at um, on Grisdale where we do our lakes course. Popped on my walking boots and went to did Lencather when the Montana 700 first came out and I carried it in my hand. I put it in my pocket. It was heavy in my pocket. I didn't know what to do with it. And I kind of fell in love with it then fell out of love with it because it was just such a big GPS unit. What do I do with it? But then I did with this pouch. £9.99. Get a GPS trainer, believe it or not. £9.99 pouch. I put it on my rucksack, belt strap, and it's there. So my, it's on there. It's low down. I was always taught when I was in the uh, scouts, you should put your weight low down in your rucksack. Well, I've got the weight of my GPS. It says 400 grams. And a bit lower down on it. And they can just take it out. I've also put a lanyard on it, as people know if you've followed me in the past. I'm very good at losing things, so I put the Garmin lanyard on, which, believe it or not, costs more than what the actual case does. But hey ho, that's buying an official Garmin product for you, isn't it? So that's what I've done. Put the case in. Really nice case. It's nice because it's not padded. Try so many cases and the padded ones and things like that. You know, if they get wet, they can take ages to dry out. This is a nice hard wearing. I say quite agriculture is making, but perfect for this GPS unit. It's actually just big enough as well. So I'm gonna put it in goes in and out and it's not a tight fit got a little strap to at the top okay, let's have a quick look at the gps unit see what we can see i've actually today put a 1 to 50 000 map in it because i'm just going to show you the difference between the two map sets last time you see i was out with 1 to 25 000 mapping and this time i'm out with 1 to 50 000. Again, it's a debate we have a lot of times with people, which is the best mapping. Do you know, if you plan your route on your computer, as I have, and you're following your route, does it really matter what type map type you've got? Don't get me wrong. If you've got the money, the 125,000 mapping is better. But if you're planning your route on the computer like I am, it doesn't really matter what map set you've got because actually I'm just following my route on the Ordnance Survey map. So that's what I'm just doing there. And the majority of the time, I'm actually going to be on my compass page, follow me in the direction that I'm going. So you say, so I'm going to get back at two minutes past four, distance to my next waypoint, time to my next waypoint. You see, I'm stopped at the moment because I'm stationary, aren't I? So again, it doesn't really matter what, if you're going to plan your route on your computer, it doesn't really matter what you do. Say, so if I rotate my GPS along, you see the electronic compass points me in the way that you're going to be. Another key feature of these new generation GPS units, this is actually tethered to my mobile phone. So if I just press the power button lightly on the side, you'll see it's there, tethered to my mobile phone. And therefore you can see my notifications there, my Instagram notifications. I'm not gonna bore you with that. But you see, I've also got the weather updates as well. So I can tap on my weather. And because this is paired with my mobile phone, it gives me a live weather map. Now, it's a nice sunny day, so there's nothing on my weather map. Again, I can click there and it shows me what the weather's gonna be like today, Saturday, Sunday, etc., etc. If I just tap on Saturday, 
it brings up my weather for today. So sunshine all the way through five o'clock, then it's cloud over. And then of course it goes dark. So it's four degrees, five degrees. You can see the temperature down there. Now, if this is, um, if you lose your mobile phone signal, this is just cached at the last time it's got its mobile phone signal. So it's still very accurate. So if it was an hour ago you got a mobile phone uh, signal, your, um, your, your weather is one hour old, which is far more up to date than what it was when you left this morning. And again, your live weather map won't work unless I've got a mobile phone signal. You'll see I've got a little blue line going around because I've not got a mobile phone signal because I'm in the middle of nowhere. Again, there's various other options available. So that's your live weather. Again, I tend to just look at the cash one. Let's click on the Saturday. We can see there's no chance of rain down the right hand side. Sunshine all day till five o'clock. Very different than last time we were out walking. So that's a nice feature within there. Again, I've got my notifications, so my smart notifications will come up. I've got an option of a torch there. My screen brightness is up there and it's now back to my route is. So that's back to my route on my map page is what I'm going to follow. And then forest now out of the wind so that was a little top tip what i tend to do with the garmin montana 700 now a lot of people are always concerned about a large screen touchscreen gps you know what happens when it rains or you know, the rain and a drop on it what happens when you put it in your pocket you accidentally touch it? yeah you can lock the screen there's various things to do but this is my little top tip of how i use it so we normally say don't go into settings of GPS units, but hey, hey don't, don't, uh, we've got to do in this case. So we just press the home button, it takes us to our main setup. Just go to the main setup here. Okay, and then go to system at the top, which is top left. And down there, you've got one that says power key. This is going to tell, tell the GPS what to do when you press this power key. So single tap status praise, double tap screen off. So if you set it for the same, you can just, if it's not set up as that, you just literally can move up and down and double tap and you change it to screen off. So you just select what you want. So single tap status page, which will take you to that status page and double tap is a screen off. Okay, when you've done that, you just press the little backward arrow down the bottom and that will take you back to whatever page you are on. And then you go back to whatever, so back on the map page. So what you do is, is when you're, when you're walking, if you want to just make sure nothing accidentally gets touched, just double tap that power button now. Double tap the power button and look, the screen's gone off. So what you can do then is put it into your pouch or however you're carrying it, put it in your pocket, put it around your neck and you can forget about it. So as we know, when we're walking a route, we'll get an audible beep as we come across a waypoint. And what the GPS will do is give that audible beep and the screen will come back into life. So when we get that beep, we know we need to have a look at our GPS unit because our direction is going to be changing. So we've got the screen off. We're accidentally not going to touch it and we're walking along. So hopefully we'll hit a waypoint in the next few seconds. Okay, we've got the audible beep. So pick our GPS unit out of our backpack, our, our sorry, case, screens on, we'll come across a waypoint and then we can quickly look at the map and go, okay, we're carrying on along this path. It's gonna be a little while before we hit our next waypoint, which is the top of the page. You can just see it there. So we're okay. So again, you can just then double tap, screen off, back in you, and enjoy your walk. So it's, that's how you can need to use that GPS to complement that walking experience. Information. Now these are all interchangeable. So. Key one there is, do I really need to know the barometer? I'd rather know how far it is to the end of the walk. You can see how far I've walked, but I'd like to know how many miles it is to the end of the walk, so I can change these. So what I do is, it's quite hard because it's a big unit. Go around the bottom, there's the three white bars. And then you can see you have one that says unlock data fields. Tap on unlock data fields. Okay, so now all my data fields are unlocked. So when I tap on the barometer, it now brings up the information so I can change all these. So what I'm looking for is distance and um, end of the walk. So let's take on navigation, distance to destination. There's thousands to choose from. Actually, I pressed the wrong one. 
distance, so I went to navigation, distance to destination, and there it is down the bottom, 9.21 miles to the end of my walk, and I've done 8.04, so that'd be right, because it's a 17 mile walk, so that's right. Now don't forget, when you can change any of these, but once you've changed them, we need to lock those data fields. So go back to the bottom right, tap on the three right bars, down the bottom, sorry, three right bars, we need to lock the data fields. Once we lock the data fields, we can touch them and they're not going to change. So we need to remember you need to unlock the data fields, just tap on them, change them, and then lock them again so you don't accidentally lock them when you're in your pocket. So this is Caston Lake. So we've dropped back down. It's a bit chilly actually walking down, but we've come back down and we're at Caston Lake now. So uh yeah, back to lowland heat. So let's see where we are. So let's see you are on the map page. Oh, it's hard to see actually. Well, this one that's better, isn't it? So there you are on the map page. There we are down the ordnance survey map at the bottom and direction are at the top. And see it's just 2.20 just in the afternoon. So let's have a quick look what else we can see. So now Compass page, walking at three miles an hour, just the next day for 0.16, estimated time of arrival 3.56, time to next waypoint 2.43, we have our directional arrow there, taking us in the direction that we need to be going on. So we're just dropping back into the west end of the village really, so we're kind of getting there, so we've walked 15.45 miles, and then we've got 1.39 to go, so we're just going to be under, just under our 17 miles. We get there, and again, have a jump onto the map page to see where we're going. It's just following the arrow, just going to join the road down here, bare left, along what's called Hillside Road West. Just going around the back of the village, keeping our height, and we'll drop back in. So it's a really nice uh, finish. First time we side off to our right hand side, so we skirt around the back of there. Um, so we've done a few miles. It's a nice drop back into, into the village. And we've got our compass page there, that's the main page, we tend to navigate on. Speed we're walking at. Distance to the next waypoint, ETA, just before four o'clock, doing all right. One minute 48. I'm just gonna have a quick look up here. This is a fantastic house called Gimenau. The house behind me, which is Gimenau, I think is the best named house ever. I don't know if you know, uh, you very good with names. Gimmer's a, a sheep which is just coming up to two years old, between one and two years old. And a now is a small hill next to, well, a small now is a small hill. So really, Gimenau, the name of the house, is a, a small hill where the Gimmers must lamb. So what they'll do is be the first time lambers, the Gimmers, they'll bring them into a little bit of a hill, which is a field next to the house. And therefore, the name of the house is aptly named Gimenau. It's great when you start understanding the place names and understanding what they mean. So I know in the last walk, we talked a little bit about the hoffs, the flat areas next to the river. And then now we're a little bit in the hills. We talk about the nows, which are the small hills they are. So Gimenau is a house. Uh, Gim is a sheep, which is like one to two years old. So we first time lammers. And the uh, now is a small hill. Um, so it's the uh, small hill, it's a house with a small hill next to it where the first time lambers would land for the first time. So the shepherd would have brought them near to him so he can keep an eye on them just in case there's any problems when the lamb because it was the first time the lamb the bad problems. So that's Gimmer now. It's quite a hard house to get to. It's very, very single. It's a little single track lane. It's right in the middle of nowhere. Uh, and you can drop off it from the higher ground above there. So, so we're just dropping into the village, just back, back into the village of Rothbury. Um, so we've just got just over a mile to go and what I'll do, I'll skirt around there and then when it gets to the end I'll do a quick summary of saving your track, looking at the final stats and uh, yeah, it's been a lovely walk.
fantastically different from a few weeks ago when I lasted the other one where it was quite wet and uh, very wet underfoot. It's been a lot better underfoot and I've not seen a sole all day, so even better. Arriving at Hillside West, which here we are, 35, 27, 22, 18, 14, 10. And that's it. So it's coming to the end. So now we've just gone past it. So that's the end of it. So what we need to do is stop that navigation. So we just press the magnifying glass where to. That's where to. We just press stop navigation. And that's stop navigating that route. But don't forget that track is still running. So if we go to the trip computer, it's still recording how far we've walked and this kind of information. All the navigation is still going, but the trip odometer is still going. So we need to save that track, don't we? So let me remember how we started. We just press the power button lightly on the side. Then we've got that note, that activity recording at the top. Tap on activity recording and that takes the track. So we've done 16.86 miles. We've been going five hours, 36 minutes. Again, if you press the I button, it gives you a little bit more information on that track. Show it overlays it on the map if you want to. This is hard to see because it's got the blue. Oh, there's another order. Sorry, it's another order come in. <laughs> oh, go back to my track. So that's my track we're looking at, and it's got the elevation. The far side is the elevation data of that track as well. So that's a true elevation data. If we go back to that first tab there, we can see what we are. We've got down the bottom either delete or pause. So we just press the save there, the little floppy disk. That brings us up the information. So that's the information of that track. We can resume it, delete it, or alternatively, just press the little save button. It exports, it exports that track, and now it's back into zero. So that's it. That's your day's walking done. It's track saved, and we've stopped navigating that route. So many thanks for watching this latest walk and talk with myself, John from GPS Training. If there's any thoughts or feedback about this uh, walk and talk, if there's, um, please do let me know in the comments box below. If there's anything you'd like me to cover in future walk and talks, what units you'd like me to cover, even accessories and things, let me know and I can hopefully cover them in future walk and talks. Thank you very much for watching and from a sunny Northumberland, have a great day.